come home. I'm Jen Mallon. I got my coffee. I got a beautiful scone. If you could smell these scones, complimentary of the Empress Tea Room, they're delicious. I just need my Devonshire cream and uh, they'll be perfect. And some strawberry jam or jelly, uh, just depending on what part of the country you're from. But today is going to be an amazing day. Why? Because we're alive, because God is good, because his mercies are new every morning. So thank you uh, for joining and being a part Heart. Listen, God has something very unique and special to say to you today. My guest is uh, so awesome. She is definitely a woman of um, my tribe, uh, Dr. Candace Smithyman. Uh, she loves uh, Israel. She writes on the Hebrew calendar. She is an apostle. She's a revivalist. She is an author. She uh, has a television program and she is really taking uh, the kingdom by storm and raising up women of God, men of God, and teaching them who they are in Christ and how to live victoriously. So before we go to her, let me just encourage you. One of my favorite scriptures uh, comes from Ephesians and it is chapter two, verse six. And it says this, he, Jesus has raised us up with Christ and exalted uh, Christ the exalted one, and we ascended with him into the glorious perfection and authority of the heavenly realm, for we are now co-seated as one with Christ. What a wonderful thing. I really live in there that we are co-seated with him. And so today we're gonna unpack that and talk about the ascended life. But before we do, we're going down to the kitchen. Stephanie has something. I love light and easy. And this is like five ingredients and three steps. So this is my kind of recipe. It is pizza stuffed mushrooms. Let's go to the homekeeper's kitchen. And here we are back in the kitchen. I just love it. Me too. I'm having so much fun doing this. I have Wanda with me today because I miss her and everybody <laughs> wanted to see her. So here she is. And today's recipe is so easy, but it's <laughs> gonna be so delicious. Mm. So today we're making pizza stuffed mushrooms. I don't know who the genius is <laughs> that came up with this. And I wish I could think out of the box like this. I need to start thinking out of the box like this and stop being so regimented, you know? It's good for you too. So all we did, I took mushrooms. Mm -hmm. I took the stems off and yeah. cleaned them out real good. Now, mushrooms are very absorbent, mm -hmm. right? Don't wash them like under the water. Take a damp cloth and just wipe them off because it will soak all that water in, okay? Yep. There's your tip of the day. So we have a pan. I just put a little oil on the pan. Wanda is um, just shredding some basil for me, so professionally, I might add. Huh. So we're just gonna take the mushrooms, we're gonna put them in the pan. I have marinara sauce, I have Italian seasonings, which I've added, it's, that's not on the recipe, and I have mozzarella. So easy, I don't know who thought of it. I love pizza, but I hate carbs, so this is so perfect, and it's gonna be delicious. Have yep. you ever, have you Go tried ahead. the cauliflower pizza crust, or you're mm. not really into that? I mean, I, I don't think I've tried that one. I've tried, we've done cauliflower uh, many different ways. Yeah. I don't think we've, we did cauliflower bread or something like that, oh. where it was a flat bread with cheese on it. Did so you like, it was similar. It was okay. It was so good. Okay. Okay, so, okay. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, <laughs> right? No, no, you can interrupt. <laughs> I want you to talk. I have marinara Ooh. sauce here. Just, I have jarred marinara sauce. You are welcome to make your own. And you simply put it in the, in the center. So easy. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Like, who thought of this? Somebody amazing who just had mushroom and pizza stuff, right? If you have kids, this would be perfect to make. Oh, yes. And this is the, uh, the kind of recipe where if you don't like pepperoni, use sausage, use ham, use onions, use whatever you like on pizza. What do you like on pizza? Everything but onions. I don't like onions. I don't like peppers, of course, but I am one of those weird individuals who likes pineapple on my pizza. Do you? <laughs> yes, Do I you love like it. ham and pineapple? Yes. Oh, I've not much. tried it, so I don't know. Don't knock it till you try it. Uh -huh. If you don't like it, that's okay. More we for you. We all have different tastes. Okay, I'm almost there. One more, one more. I got a little baby one right here. Oh. Okay, lots of mozzarella. The oven, you can hear, is preheating to 350. Let me 
cover this and feel free to go heavy on the cheese because you want it nice and bubbly. Now look at these cute little. They're so cute. I don't, that's what I was They're telling so you. Adorable. I've never seen them before. Cute little pepperonis, but again, use whatever you like, whatever you have in the house. This yeah. is perfect for leftovers. I try not to waste leftovers at home. I try to figure out a, another recipe to mm -hmm. use things with. Mm -hmm. Because if there's nothing I can't stand more, it's to throw food away. Because you might as well just be throwing money away. And in this time, day and age, you cannot afford to throw a penny away. No. Between gas prices and... These recipes will all be up on my Facebook page, the right. fan page. They'll all be on my blog, which if you go to my blog, I'm also, I also have a bunch of money-saving tips, like money-saving apps and different things, which we all could use right now. I try to save every penny I can. So I added this. This is not on the recipe, but I'm going to put some Italian seasoning on the top just to add another level of flavor. Mm. Yum. Okay, now are you ready for the magic of television? Watch. Mm, see this? Beautiful. I'm going to move it now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to come back here and get this. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Can you get that? You can't see it right now because the dish is yellow, but if you get a shot of there, look how beautiful. Tip that up. <gasps> wow. Yummy. Hot? Okay. It's not too bad. Okay, so we got a plate. I'm gonna get a spoon to dish us out one. And forks, here we go. And then we have shredded basil to put on top for the little bit of freshness. Yum. All right, there we go. All about the color. I think Andrew's gonna love this one, right? Oh, he's, oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we don't watch all the time, so sorry. Okay, we're gonna take a little bite here, ready? Mm -hmm. And here's the knife for you. And these are going to be nice and hot, so be, be careful. careful. That, I don't want to talk with food in my mouth. It's so good. And the basil, don't skip the fresh basil. Because it, it adds that extra flavor mm -hmm. right on top. Mm -hmm. Delicious. This is pizza stuffed mushrooms. The information will come up on your screen. Mm. You want to say something? Mm -mm. Just so good. Okay. So good. <laughs> the information will come up on the screen where you can get the recipes right away. And we'll see you next time. was yummy. So all of the yum and less calories because it's in a mushroom and not on bread. But I do love bread. I just got back from Israel and oh, the bread, the bread, the bread, the bread. It's awesome. But listen, we are so blessed to have um, an incredible woman of God, but not just that, real, authentic, powerful, a kingdom woman. Um, who walks the walk, talks the talk, and then helps others really get healing and understand who they are in Christ and what kingdom living is all about. And so, Dr. Candace, thank you oh, for being thank here. You. And thank you. Um, it, it's awesome when you have mutual friends. And, and, and uh, But I have followed you from afar for a long time, uh, about, I would say about a year and a half, two years ago, I, or it was before COVID, um, I found um, your course on the Hebrew months. I'm like, yes, 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 woo! And I was so excited. And so just to, to meet you and, you know, c converse with you. And, um, you know, sometimes we just feel all alone and then we talk mm -hmm. and we hear all these similarities, yes. you know, and all these cool things. And, you know, God is on the move. That's mm -hmm. my favorite line from Narnia is Aslan is on the move and he's doing great things. Mm -hmm. And so I can't wait just to hear um, about your project, this book, um, empowering us and, and equipping us to live the way we were created to live. 
Oh, thank you so much, Yay. Pastor Jen. I feel so honored to be a guest on your show. You're so beautiful. Oh. And yeah, I mean, you have just such an authentic personality. And so thank you for having me be a guest today. I'm really excited to be able to share with the people what God is doing. Yay. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about your family. Well, I have an amazing husband. We've been married for 32 years. Yes. Good yeah. job. Good I job. Know. Good job. Woo. Good girl. Woo. He's a retired pastor. All right. Actually, we just recently retired from pastoring. And it was a quite a transition for us. Um, but the Lord has really moved us on in a whole lot of other arenas. You know, it's sometimes uh, good things have to end, yeah. but other things, other seasons are there. And so we've stepped into a new season and my children have been serving in ministry. And so they're stepping into some new seasons too as well. But it's all good. It's all God. It's all exciting. You know, yeah. you have to take those leap of faith when you hear the Lord, you, do. you know, and be obedient to what it is that he's telling you. Yeah. And it's an honor to serve him in all kinds of capacity. And sometimes we don't know what doors he's opening up. And so we're willing to go through the process of letting some things go that are even so important and so important to our heart. And so when, when it was time for us to, um, to move on, it was, it was hard. But it was a blessing because I knew that God had great things in store. And I know that some people are watching today and they're, they're going through that right now, you know. And we're actually in a transition time on the Hebrew calendar. Do you know, um, this is a time where we remember that the Lord blessed the Israelites as they were going across the wilderness for all those years. And he gave them manna, quail, and water. Yeah. The month of ER, it's a time where um, we hold fast to the supernatural of God, yeah. but we have to trust him in everything. And so when he says it's time to move on, we have to trust him and we have to trust in his goodness and his love and his prosperity and the fact that we're his kingdom priests that he's called unto himself. You know, that's what he spoke in the month of Sivan when he came down and he gave the Torah yeah. to the people. And he said, you are going to be a holy nation, my kingdom of priests. And I sit and I revel in that and I think, wow, he just wants to draw me near to him. And so on this journey that I'm on now, he's just drawing me nearer to him in a way that I wasn't before. Yeah. And we have to take these leaps of faith and we get drawn nearer. So I'm nearer in a new space. My husband's nearer <laughs> in a new space and our children are as well. But it's good because once you're called, you stay called. Yeah. called, I'm anointed, I'm appointed, I'm set apart. Um, uh, to minister to gospel is a part of who I am. It's just that now he's broadened me into other realms. He says, it's time for my word to go beyond. Yeah. And you nurtured a beautiful group of people and you raised them up and you sent them out. And now I'm sending you to go out. And you know, he was the great apostolos, right? He was the great, he says, I am the sent one, right? Yeah. And so we're following after him. And so, you know, that's kind of a long interlude, but I know God is, is working right now and I know your viewers too some of you are watching the show and you're transitioning yeah. you know and just know that transition is a part of life it's a it's a part of a process but he's with us and he's growing us and growing us and so he's growing me new because I was willing to say yes even though I was afraid to yeah. let things go yeah so it's the story. Okay, so you are ministering to me <laughs> and and the viewers because you know we're all in transition or yeah. we are all going to be in transition or we're yes. all coming out of transition. But my past my husband and I pastored for 32 years mm -hmm. and we're in that transition and it is hard to let go. Yes. And uh, it, it seems easy in theory until he really asks you to obey him. And so Thank you for your obedience and shining the light and you're a few months ahead of us, but it encourages my heart. And when you talk about the Hebrew calendar, my baby jumps, you know, like Mary and Elizabeth, I just, oh, I love hearing that. It just, it's, that's, that's fresh oil. And, and thank you. Thank you for saying yes to the Lord. Well, thank you for saying yes too, because you have this amazing program that yeah. is reaching all of these viewers and touching people's lives. And you know, when we're faithful in a certain uh, season of our life and God begins to open up the doors and we step through portals yeah. that position us for these new seasons, because portals are all about uh, openings from heaven that God's calling us to step into those places and embark on that new journey. Yeah. And so when we're willing to let, let one aspect of our life go, 
it was good. And I think that's really what's the most difficult thing, Jen, is when something is good, but God's offering us a better, yeah. right? It's easy to leave something that's not good. Okay. Right. You're okay. Right. right. Because because we our souls have been equipped to say I'm not fitting in this space anymore. Yeah. But when we're asked to leave something good because He's taking us to something better for us in that season, then we have to. Um, it, it, it's more painful because we're letting we're making that choice to let a good thing go. It's yeah. a little bit easier to let a bad thing go, but to let a good thing go. But I believe that there's a greater grace that comes. Yeah because the Lord knows we had to really obey. It can be sometimes easier to obey when something's not good. That's right. But it's more difficult to obey when something is yeah. good. Like why, why, why? God, why? why? I, was, I love that, I was good at that. I I, it was meaningful, it was fulfilling, so why? I know. But we'll never know what's on the other side of our obedience, the souls, the ministry, the mission, you know, the expansion, the enlargement, until we do it. And, and I love, thank you for being real and vulnerable and just, you know, saying you had to do it scared. I had to do it scared. You had to do it scared. And, you know, yeah. a lot of us have to do it scared, but we have him. That's we have right. him and he's enough. He is enough. <laughs> he is enough. And I talk about that in this book and other books that I've written about how he is enough. And yeah. we hold on to his enough and what he's blessing us and with what he's giving us. We can do it. We can, we can make those leaps of faith. I think about Jesus. It was good for him to be with his disciples. And then it was time for him to go and to leave all those that he yeah. loved on the earth. But he was going to a better place yeah. to bring us a better covenant yeah. so that we would be able to step into relationship with the Father in a way that we wouldn't have it. Yeah. So his journey invites us to go into a deeper relationship with the Father. And really that's what Portals is all about. It's about going into places where we get an opportunity to step more into relationship with the Father. When Jesus resurrected from the grave and Mary was there and tried to cling to him and he said don't cling don't to me Mary me. Yeah. don't touch me I haven't yet ascended to my father yeah. and I'm going to my father and your father I'm going to my God and your God and he was making statements to Mary like Mary I know you see this as like I've resurrected now and this is the greatest thing but there's a greater yeah. thing coming and you've got to let me go because I'm going to go to that space and I'm going to take you all with me because see not only have I resurrected to overcome sin death in the grave but now I'm ascending and I'm taking my church with me yeah. and my church which means you and me and all of us together are going to be seated with my Father in heavenly places. Yeah. And your viewpoint of life and how you learn about my dad and about me and about the Holy Spirit, everything is going to change when I'm ascended. So don't touch me, yeah. Mary, because yeah. there's more to the story. Yeah. And you know, um, I love that. She saw it in 1D, but he was trying to get her to see it in 3D. And she just didn't have the ability until yeah. she walked it out. Yes. And I love, um, and let me just introduce your book, yeah. because I love how you have um, explained these things. In your book, it's called Heavenly Portals, which is awesome. And you might say, well, what's a portal? And what's ascending? And what's the difference between resurrected life and ascended life? And the book will tell you. <laughs> but today you get like a little sample and a little snippet um, of it. But this is where Jesus needs us. This is yes. where the Father needs us so that we can live, take authority and bring his kingdom. We say thy kingdom yes. come, thy will be done. But really, are we really willing to let thy kingdom come? And then how do we do it? What do we do with our hurts? What do we do with our pains? What do we yes. do with our traumas? What do we do with our disappointments? So tell me about how you address some of this. Yes, and each chapter is really power packed with the greater revelation about how you can walk as a citizen of heaven on the earth. Because if we have ascended with Christ and we're seated with him in heavenly places, which is what the word says, which is what Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter two, verse six, right? And every spiritual blessing is ours. And every, or, every day was ordained for us before any day came to be, if these things are truth, then we've now been positioned in what's called eternal time. Pastor Jen, we operate in earth time, but we should be operating in eternal time in the earth. 
earth time is limited, yeah. but eternal time is expansive and opens us up to the blessings of heaven yeah. all the time. When Jesus came and he of course left the throne to come as a baby and go through this whole process of humanity to die for our sins and shed his blood and go through the process of resurrection so sin, death, and the grave could be overcome and then ascend that whole process there positions us now as citizens of heaven that are on an eternal time zone. It means we never die. Yeah. And if you never die, then you are forever accessing the realms of eternity. Yeah. So, so I teach in the book how to stay seated with Christ so you can see the manifestations in the earth of having that mindset that Paul asked the people to have, which is set your mind on things Thanks. above, <laughs> okay? And all of the above is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yeah. And so when Jesus walked, he never left his seat with his father. His body was physically here and he was physically doing amazing and miraculous things and all of his disciples and all were watching, but his heart remained with the Father. Yeah. Because he said, when you see me, you see the Father. See the Father. Everything that he did was be because he still positioned himself with the Father in his heart, in his soul. He was still there even though his body walked the earth. And as citizens of heaven, our body is in the earth, okay? But technically the Lord sees us from a spiritual and soulish perspective. We're to be communing with God here, though we're physically walking here. We are heavenly portals. I love it. We are heavenly portals. We carry the glory. We are glory portals. We are the reason that change can be made in the earth today. Yes. And it's our job. And the earth is crying out. The earth cries yes. out. The rocks cry out. They cry out to see the Father. And Jesus came and he made a way for the sons and daughters to be the replica of the ones who have relationship with the Father. Pastor Jen, we should be changing everything in the yeah. earth because of our position in being seated with him. There's so much power there. There. And I teach in scripture and I'm a word girl. Yeah, the yeah. more you get in the word, the more your soul, it, it sponges the word of God and you begin to walk and live like the word himself. He is the word. Yeah. He came, he walked, right? Yeah. But when we read his word, we sponge that into our soul and our soul begins to turn eternal. Yeah. though we're living in the earth realms. That power is yeah. unbelievable. And then we walk by faith, then we trust, then we obey, then we do all the things that God wants us to do because we can't help ourselves. We just do it because we're being changed by the word. And so I give so much word in here. People tell me they go through it and they say, I've read it three times because I'm getting deeper in knowing who I am. Yeah. And what God has called me to do. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 through 28 talks about how we are created in the image of God. But he gives a, a command to Adam and Eve before the fall even happened. And that was to be fruitful, multiply, increase, subdue, and have dominion. Take over. Take over. Take over. <laughs> Is there ever a time in history where the church of Jesus Christ hasn't wanted to take over? then why don't we take over? Why don't we? Why don't we take over? Because he's given us everything yeah. to take over. We were given that command before Adam and Eve ever allowed the enemy to speak to them. I mean, you know, if you have an intruder come into your house, wouldn't you say, stop, stop. you Go. need to leave? Go. So they had authority in that moment to tell the enemy, stop, you're intruding on my territory. Get out, I'm not gonna listen to you. But Eve began to listen, Adam began to listen, and then we started stepped into earth time. Yeah. But before that was eternal time. And now Jesus has redeemed all things. So now we're back in eternal time. So let us walk fully redeemed in <laughs> eternal time. <laughs> I love it. Kairos timing. That's right. And one of the mistakes that Christians make is we live in uh, chronos time. We we live limited and we're supposed to be living supernaturally. That's right. And oh, I love your enthusiasm and I love how you love the word and you yes. explain the word. You know, uh, I think there's many people watching and they're just like, Dr. Candace, that's amazing. And my spirit believes it, but I, I don't know how to walk it out. I'm experiencing burnout. I'm disappointed. I'm offended. I'm hurt. I'm, I'm depressed. I'm lonely. And these things, mindsets uh, seem to be taking over my life and controlling me. And I really want 
to live in the way you are describing, but I'm not there. How do, how do I get there? And you know, we've got just a few minutes left. So can you speak to that Christian that's worn out and weary and how do they take these truths and apply them practically so they can be those image bearers yes. for Jesus? Yeah, you know, that, that, and, and it all comes down to how do you practically apply yeah. the Word of God. You know, and that's what the Apostle Paul was doing when he sent all those letters to the people. He's trying to show them, <laughs> God has given me this great revelation. I want you all to grow in that. But even the Apostle Paul grew in what's called progressive revelation. Yeah. And so I would say to those who are watching today that are experiencing all of these difficult things, take the moment that you're in right now and get into the Word of God yeah. to answer your issue for today, whatever that is. Yeah. The way that I learned the Word of God, Pastor Jen, was when I was dealing with an issue, I did it the old way. I just flipped to the back of the concordance of my Bible <laughs> and it's like, I've got anxiety today. Okay, what does God say about anxiety? Yeah. Because anxiety is coming from an earth perspective, a fallen nature perspective. Yeah. It is part of humanity, okay? It's a real thing. But what does God say about this? Yeah. And so as we take that word and we apply that word, our soul then gets washed in the word. Yeah. And this is step by step. So it's progressive. So although you may not have this automatic switch in your life, okay, to make things right, walk with God yeah. and he will make it right. Amen. Yeah. Will you just pray for the viewer that just needs you to release the glory of God, the peace yeah. of God, the shalom of God over them right now? Yeah. Yeah, Lord, we just praise you and we thank you right now for your precious son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, shed his blood yeah. for forgiveness of our sins. And Lord, we just thank you that you are touching each person that's watching right now. You know their trauma, you know their pain, you know their weakness. I ask that you dispatch the angels to go and be with them right now and to minister to them. Listen, yes. I want you to know God fills your pain, he fills your heart, but he has, he has taken care of this on the cross. Jesus died so that we would resurrect. Yes. So I speak resurrection yes. life to you right now. And those angels are gonna come and they're gonna lift you up. And today you're gonna go forth and be victorious as an overcomer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Listen, when we talk about the goodness of God, it's emotional. It, 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 is, it is when you've had that encounter. Um, he's so precious. Thank you for putting your life in this story. I encourage you to, to look Dr. Candace up, follow, watch her TV broadcast, her podcasts, her courses, get her books. They will enrich and change your life. And viewer, if you need to make a decision today, come home, come home to the heart of God, to the love of God, to the revelation of God so that you can live an ascended life. May the Lord bless you.